Okay, good morning everyone. So today's topic is automating your consolidation process with Dynamics AX. So we're just going to get started. So some of the topics that I'm going to cover this morning are um, the legal entity structure, just laying the groundwork for how the legal entities are structured inside AX, how the consolidation entities are, are created and managed, how we make use of the elimination rules, and any online and showing the online consolidation in AX, and then finally tying it all together and showing how we've gone ahead and done the automation in AX with the complete consolidation. And then as normal, we'll just open it up for some questions at the end. Okay, so the first place that I want to start is that um, just pointing out that AX is a global solution. So we're, we can go ahead and we can put all of the companies inside a single database. So even if, you're, even if your in, uh, organization spans the globe or has a small footprint or whatever the configuration is, Microsoft Dyna Dynamics AX 2012 has um, a single global solution. So there's pre-built country-specific localizations for currently 25 countries. It's 30 languages, it's highly scalable, and it's multi, multi, multi on a single database. And those multis are multi-entity, multi-language, and multi-currency. And then to the extent that it makes sense, we're sharing data and unified processes across the organization. And we're going to support the compliance of standards like SOX, IFRS, when we're talking about the US GAAP consolidation, FAS52 is definitely supported here. And there's some other ones as well. And just to sort of take a deeper dive into the global, before we swing into the consolidation, is that the countries have localizations. So there's country-specific laws and regulations that's addressed, and also doing the tax, the accounting, and the financial reporting requirements. And then there's language translations. So it's, um, it spans all the user interface, all the documentation, and then over and above that, it's going to be the system documents, the invoices, the purchase orders, the quotes, etc. So you can actually assign customers templates that print in different languages. So you can either be a global organization or you're servicing, uh, um, servicing customers around the globe or um, suppliers around there. So you're covered no matter which way you go. And there's localizations out of the box. We just install them in the machines where appropriate for all of this list of localizations. And if anyone wants a list, just reach out to us. And I can always give it to you guys after today's, today's presentation. OK, so inside AX 2012, we have a single database. And what we have inside that database is we've got some shared data and some um, data that's specific to the entity. So inside the shared data, all the currency stuff is going to be shared. So one single exchange rate, one currency. And we'll be using those in the consolidation, of course, um, putting average rates in at the end of the month. The financial dimensions and the chart of accounts, to the extent possible, we share a chart of accounts across entities, which makes the consolidation just seamless. But if that is not the case, and you've got some um, companies that have mandated chart of accounts from their localizations, or for some reason they're just not going to fit into the shared chart of accounts, we can have a few different chart of accounts and map to it in a consolidation account. And then you know the periods of time are going to be shared as well. And then each company is going to have their own set of books. Each company is going to have a complete ledger. And they might have some company-specific financial dimensions or parameters. And the same thing with fiscal periods. OK, so when we do consolidating data in AX, the first thing is we take advantage, to the extent possible, of the shared chart of accounts. When we do a shared chart of accounts, and typically the do-tos and do-froms, they all line up to each other. And it's a self-eliminating in the consolidation. So a well-designed chart of accounts actually reduces the number of eliminations you need. Um, we also, if you find that you need to have more than one chart of accounts across all of your organization, we can actually use the consolidation accounts to actually take care of that. And the financial dimensions. You can have lots of financial dimensions. And then you might decide that when it comes to the consolidation, I only want to take it to division and department. And maybe I've got product in my underlying. So in my underlying source entities. So you can have as many financial dimensions in the consolidation, or you can limit them. Totally a choice of the organization. And then every transaction is um, tracked inside AX, potentially in three different currencies, base, accounting, and reporting. Um, 
then we revalue at the end of the month in the source entities, and then we're taking it across the consolidated entity and doing a currency translation there as well. So there's both the revaluation and the translation. Okay, so I just want to do a short demonstration and show you how legal entities and the chart of accounts is organized inside AX2012. So I'm inside AX2012, and you can see here, I'm going to have a list over here of all my entities, including my consolidation points. So any place along the way that I have a consolidation company. So if I look at the way that the um, system is done, and let me just go over to the organization administration, which is the place where I go ahead and uh, do legal entities. I'm actually in a consolidated entity right now. So if I pop under legal entities, you can see that a consolidation entity, it cannot take transactions. It has to have, it can only be used for consolidation and for eliminations. So it's a point where transactions are aggregated. Once they're aggregated, then we just do eliminations in here and to um, go ahead and consolidate the information in here. And if I view this in a hierarchy and I look at the org structure, I actually have a picture here that kind of gives me my, my org chart broken out. So I can see here that this is a consolidation point, that's a consolidation point, that's a consolidation point. All three of these will be set up as legal entities, checking those two boxes for the consolidation and the eliminations. And then these will roll up into that company as well. So once it's, and it just takes, you know, minutes to take, set up a new legal entity, but once those legal entities are set up, let me just go over to an underlying company for a moment, and I'll flip over here. Okay, and let's just go over to the general ledger and take a look at the chart of accounts. Okay, so inside the chart of accounts, each entity is going to be assigned a chart of accounts. So in my case here, I've got a shared chart of accounts. So these, um, this chart of accounts here is now going to be shared across a number of different entities. But in some cases, I, in Japan, I need a different chart of accounts. And in Russia, I need a different chart of accounts as well. So I have the ability to go ahead and do that. And then what I'm going to do is to get my consolidation automated, I'm going to now map this account to its own consolidation account. So this is how it's going to know how to get it into the right place into a US parent. Wherever the parent is, it's going to be using the consolidation accounts. And, then the, and finally, just to get that ledger set up, once I go ahead and get the general ledger set up, I'm going ahead and assigning it the accounting currency and the reporting currency. So there might be, so there's going to be different entities with different currencies, and then it'll be doing the translation when it goes into the consolidation entity if it's different from the functional currency of the consolidation entity. Okay, so those are just a couple of things of how AX organizes its chart of accounts and organizes um, its entity setup. So let me flip back over to, okay. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about the consolidation inside AX. So the consolidation functionality in AX is used to combine the financial results, results I'm sorry, for several subsidiary companies into results for a single consolidated company. So this is actually a hard consolidation. We're setting up an entity and we're bringing in all of the transactions into there. The consolidation entities need to be set up at each level of the consolidation. And consolidated company data can then be used in a consolidation company at a higher level in the hierarchy. So you can consolidate into one company and then use that consolidated data on next level up. And different exchange rates can be selected for the various types of ledger accounts in the consolidated company. And then you can create one or more hierarchies based on business scenarios and organizational complexity. In some cases, you might have two different views of, of the um, consolidation. One's for stat, and one might be for gap. So you can create multiple org structures, each one of them giving a slightly different view of your organization. Okay, then there's eliminations. So elimination transactions will be required when a parent company does business with one or more subs. 
And we can go ahead, the, as I mentioned earlier, the well-designed chart of accounts does some eliminations for you automatically. And then we can set up elimination rules to create elimination transactions in a legal entity that is specified as a destination legal entity for eliminations. So that sentence basically means that the elimination rules are going to be created and they're going to be used inside the consolidated entity. And elimination journals can be generated either during the consolidation process or if you put them in after the consolidated data happens, you can do an elimination journal proposal from within the consolidation entity. Okay, so now let's do a short demonstration of how the consolidation actually happens inside AX and how eliminations are done. Okay, so if I go into, I switch over to a consolidation entity. In this case, I'll go into my Cotoso group, which is a top-level company. And there's an area here under periodic in the general ledger called consolidate. And when I do, I go into the consolidate online. And later in our demonstration, I'm going to show you how to completely automate this. So basically, you just tell it the starting and ending accounts that you want to use. If you're using consolidation accounts, then you go ahead and check that box. And you give a date range. And then you can go ahead and include actual amounts and budget amounts, whichever is applicable. And if you're doing budgets, you can say what budget model, mod, model you want to use. And um, budget exchange rate types, if that's in play as well. So once that's filled out, then you basically have to select what dimensions to come across. So in my example here, I've got a long list of dimensions. I don't want to clutter my consolidation company in. So I'm just going to use business unit, and I'm going to use department. And I'm also going to add another, um, another dimension, which is source entity. So that's actually going to flag every single transaction with the company account that it came from. So when I'm analyzing the cash, I can say, oh, wow, this came from company A, company B, company C. It'll just be crystal clear in my analysis. And then you have to fill in what legal entities are going into the consolidation. So in this case, it is three different legal entities, and um, you can do fractional shares if you want. And then you're going to go ahead and just put in any intercompany elimination rules. So in this case, I've got some intercompany fixed asset purchases. I've defined that rule for myself, and I'm, putting, I'm listing in here all the eliminations that I want processed at the time of doing the consolidation. And then the final piece is a currency translation. We need to go ahead and do the balance sheet at spot. We need to do the P&L at average. And then when I click on OK, it's going to run the consolidation. And it's actually now going to take the transactions from these three legal entities and bring it into this consolidation entity. And it's going to be at the account dimension combination level. So it's not actually individual transactions. It summarized data to the level that you ask it to. OK, so that is an idea of how the consolidation is run in a single consolidation entity. So now I want to talk a little bit about the process in some of the more complex scenarios we typically see. So what we typically see is that you probably have multiple levels of your consolidation, and you probably have multi-currency in play. So in that case, what you need to do is you need to first revalue everything in the source companies. So the consolidation cannot be run until you've done your revaluations in each of the source companies going into a consolidation entity. And that's to get the unrealized gains and losses um, when the transaction currency is different from the functional currency. Then we have to go ahead and run the consolidation. Now the consolidation can be run over and over and over again, but because of the currency translation, it has to be run in the exact order that you need to. And we'll go into that in just a second. Um, so you have to make sure that you run level three, and then you revalue, and you run level two, and do the revaluation, and then you do the top level. So it's a bottom-up approach. It has to be um, run in a very precise order. Um, it also has to do the translation as well. And then once we're done, every time you do a monthly consolidation, you consolidate that month. It actually, you can run it as many times as you want. So you can run it, you know, four times during the course of the day. And it'll just basically overwrite the information that's in there. So the system doesn't have to sort through this transaction's in, this transaction's not. It just completely does it, and it does it very efficiently in a short amount of time. But then after you're doing that, because you're layering just a month into the consolidated entity, you're going to have to revalue your balance sheet to get your balance sheet at the spot rate. So those are sort of the steps that have to happen. 
So let's go ahead and show you a do and demonstration of how we would go ahead and do that. So let's go over to organizational administration. And let's go into legal entities and pop up that picture. Okay, this is a multi-currency um, consolidation. So in this case, I have to do the revaluation of all of these entities. Then I have to run this consolidation, this consolidation, this consolidation. And I can't, then I have to revalue the balance sheets of these entities before I can run um, this entity. And the way that we're, um, and we've actually done some automation from here. So what will happen here is, is that you would have to run this in exactly the right order or else your consolidation is not going to be proper or correct. So in order to do that, what we've done is we've, we've created some buttons on the top over here to create the consolidation. So, and also your, your organization may change over time. So um, in some cases, you need to go ahead and edit this org structure, and this company goes underneath there, and then you have to go into each of the consolidation entities and rework it. So we've created some um, efficiencies here for you to be able to create the consolidation in just one click. But let me just go back over to our presentation for a second, because I think we're not quite there yet. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're leveraging the organizational hierarchy, and we're going to use it for two things, for closing the periods and for running the entire consolidation from the org organizational hierarchy. And then the organizational hierarchy is actually used inside the financial reporter as well. So inside there, we can dynamically align it with the trees and management reporter. So you can create financial reports using this org structure, and it translates into trees, and it uses the report date to select which corresponding organization hierarchy to use. And now I think we're there. So let's go back over to the product. So in this case here, as you can see, I've got some org structures lined up over here. So when I want to go in and I'm in the middle of doing my consolidation, and this section of the tree looks great, what I want to do is I want to go into change period. And to unlock this, to take these three off, and say, okay, now for period five, I'm ready to put this section of the tree on hold. And that locks it off for entry. So this allows you, during that course of you know, those precious days of the month end, um, to go ahead and lock down sections of your organization. And then also when it comes time to go ahead and close the period, then you can just go ahead and do it for everybody. And so this way you've got control without having to go into every single company and do it. You can do it right from the consolidation entity using the org structure. You can also go ahead and just create the consolidation. So rather than going in and out of the individual companies and running it, you can just blast it through with the touch of a button. So in this case, once I say 5, 1, 2, 2013, whoops, I think we've got an extra one there, to 531, and I click on OK, it's going to run the revaluations of the single entities, the revaluation of the consolidation entities, and the revaluation of the consolidation, all in exactly the right order. So I get a perfect, optimized, automated consolidation every time, eliminating the need for reconciliations. What I can do now is just concentrate on the account analysis. And then what we're seeing inside the financial statements, whoops, let me just go into it, is now I'm actually just doing the financial reporting here off of the consult, off of the org structure that's in there. So management reporter is rendering the reports according to your date range. Okay, so that is definitely, um, we believe, the best way to handle the consolidation and also to make sure and to ensure the accuracy, which is sometimes when you get into some more complex organizations that have multiple levels and a lot of legal entities, it just makes the whole thing seamless. Okay, so at this point, I want to just open up for any Q&A you might have. And if you have some Q&A, just type it live into the chat. Okay, you guys, have a great day.